Our passion didn't start with the mouth. It started with people, with the well-being of the profession. And if you're like me, maybe a little bit of your nerdiness in all things tech too. We all want to love what we do, but the truth is burnout, people problems, and glass ceilings can keep us from doing what we set out to do. So let's get back to the heart of connection. Welcome to the Dental Handoff. This show is about passing you the knowledge, the habits, the systems, and the strategies to lead your teams, lean on the tech, and listen to your gut while you take care of teeth. And let's get honest, the overall health of our communities. Let's stop using the wrong end of the toothbrush, y'all. My name is Dr. Kelly Tanner. Oh, and uniquely, I'm a dental hygienist, too. You can consider me a guru in the dental and leadership industry. With over three decades of experience, my goal is to take you to the next level by empowering growth, perspective, and confidence. By identifying the gaps, recognizing the plaque, and extracting the truth with other experts in the field. I'll share their stories, empower you to own yours, and elevate your passion in the process. So have a seat in the chair, put on your bib, and let's get to work. Welcome to the Dental Handoff. I'm Dr. Kelly Tanner, RDH, and I am here at ADA SmileCon, and we are doing this show, and in the background, there's exhibitors, there's a lot of activity going on. You'll probably hear some background noise. With me today, I have Janice Irvin, and we met last night at a reception. You guys, this is why going to these conventions is so amazing, because you get to meet innovative people, the big thinkers, the people who are on the ground doing such wonderful things and you know I like for them to tell their story so tell us first about why dental hygiene why why you chose dental hygiene and what are you doing now so it's 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 actually not that cool of a story um I actually wanted to go to dental school and um I went to hygiene school because I moved to Hawaii because of a boy and they don't have a dental program And then I went to the hygiene program. They were lovely. And I thought, maybe this is what I'd like to do. And then I don't want to move from Hawaii at that time. So I said, hey, let's give it a shot. Went to hygiene school, graduated, had my baby while I was in hygiene school, and then graduated pregnant uh, with my second child. And then I practiced hygiene for about six months and said, I want to go back to dental school. So I got enrolled in college about a year out of hygiene school. And I said, all right, let's start, you know, taking classes. Got into all my core classes again, working hard. And then I get pregnant again. (laughs) Yeah. And (laughs) so, you know, there went that dream. And it was a choice that I made that, you know, it just wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't looking good. And I want to focus and be a mom. So as a hygienist, I don't regret going into my profession. I think it was where I was meant to be. I love being with my patients. I love having the opportunity to get them in a different setting uh, as opposed to being in pain. (laughs) And uh, we get to actually hang out. And I, I talk more, I talk a lot more than I thought I did because um, sometimes you don't know you're a big mouth. (laughs) <laughs> yes yes so um i think it's a good space for me to be um as a hygienist i've really i've enjoyed my career i've been a hygienist for 18 years i went to university of hawaii and it was a great experience and i i i am i am i'm in the profession i was supposed to be in you know yeah. and sometimes you don't you don't know where you're supposed to be until no. you know no. Yeah. So tell people, so this was the story she was just telling. I didn't even know all the things that she was doing. So tell us what you're doing now, because I met you last night knowing, knowing what you did with Susan Cotton and her team, and then you do so much more. So tell us all of the wonderful, wonderful things that you're doing as a dental hygienist and how you have taken what you know, and you're helping people. So currently I own a travel dental hygiene company and it's based out of the state of Colorado. So if you are interested as a hygienist and you want a little bit more adventure in your career, you can come to Colorado. Of course, you got to apply for your hygiene license because that has not happened in our profession yet. And um, you can work in the state and play and have fun there. Um, I really do throw myself into nurturing the hygienist because as temps, because that is what it is. It's a temporary position, but we are asking someone to be very adaptable and play nice all day with people that they don't know. 
And that is a skill and you need a coach to do that well. And so as a owner of a company that I expect that my um, workers be happy and healthy in their workspace, I do put forth the effort in making sure that they are comfortable in their workspace. Um, you know, not all workspaces are perfect, but I think as an employer, I do need to have take on the responsibility of giving them tools to allow them to work through those hard moments, but then also be there to be a listener when maybe something just isn't the right fit. So wait a minute. Well, and, and then two, I, I, I remember meeting uh, Janice when we were doing our disc certification and, and all of that with uh, Custom Dental Solutions. So you, you came up with this idea of this travel company. Like, where did that come from? Like, did you see a problem that needed to be solved? Why, well, yes, I did. <laughs> So uh, I had a temp come into my office and it was during Christmas break and I had come back and um, there was a uh, hardened profi paste in my drawer where I know that she went in there with her hands and who knows what else she touched with her dirty gloves and for how long and throughout the day. And first I was mad. I was like, seriously, we did call the agency and say, we do not want her back. And then I thought, one, why did they let, why is she not getting reprimanded? Because they were like, well, we'll just send her to a different office. They literally said, thank you for letting us know. We'll make sure that she doesn't go to your office next time. Wow. So did I want someone to not have a job? No, I needed someone to be coached and understanding why that behavior was there. And then I thought, is it because... Maybe she's just over hygiene. Maybe she's tired and, and doesn't want to be there. And those are my patients that I love and care for. And I don't know what kind of service they got. Or was it that the schedule was crazy and no one was helping her and I needed to soften my heart towards her and understand where she was coming from in frustration. But it doesn't mean that you go into the drawers and infect and cross-contaminate everything. So... I did look at it in frustration, but I also looked at it. Something needs to change in the temp industry when it comes to caring for your worker, because a temp is still a provider that's gone to school. We are all knowledgeable, but we don't pour, at least in my opinion, education for the temp doesn't get poured into like your standard employee. They get missed they don't get to come to these unless they pay for it. They don't get to grow their craft sometimes unless they do it on their own. And so for that, for that very reason, my patients may or may not have gotten the care that they needed because she was just a body. And I don't want that for my employees. They are not just a body. They are professionals. They worked hard. They're probably still paying on their student loans. Yeah. And they need to know that I am here as an employer to support them and grow them clinically and, you know, clinically. And then, of course, you know, with their personal selves, because you can't have whole self wellness if you're not looking at everything, as you know, yeah, you know. Yeah. So when you look in the temp industry, I think that's where people are trying to search for their forever job. But if they don't know what they're looking for and you're not cultivating that environment for them to find self growth then how are they able to find an office that's going to work well for them if they don't even know? Right. Yeah. That self-awareness. Yeah. So that's really the premise of where I was coming from, from that experience, because I have temped before. I've lived in multiple places being a military brat and just with, you know, moving with my husband and I, um, you know, everyone should have the opportunity to for growth when you're coming in there and providing a service for the dentist and their practice is growing because you're there and also understanding that you're coming into a work culture and adapting to what they need and doing it so skillfully that they'd like you back but how awesome is it that how awesome is it that you are supporting i mean cuz that's more than a lot of even hygienists get in general that 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 support so you're going really truly above and beyond with your leadership and what you're seeing needs to be addressed because I hadn't you know I, I think I thought about it at one point I mean there's a lot of hygienists that 
can or there, there's different obstacles, different barriers of why they cannot come to conferences and can't experience the different things that we have that we're able to because they have to take time off from work or their employer doesn't, you know, pay for them, support them to come here, time off, all of the things. But then you're supporting them on a different level. You're saying, I'm here to help you. I'm here to coach you. And you provide employment. That's, I mean, that's different levels of security for an individual. So that's, that's true leadership. So congratulations on all that you're doing. What is the hardest thing that you found about um, being an entrepreneur? being alone <laughs> loneliness is very hard because it makes it difficult when you're an entrepreneur i um i know all of us as hygienists have been very hard on our dentists and we're like you know you don't know what you're doing yada 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 and now um the tables have turned i have my own employees and i do have empathy toward my boss I understand all the worries and stress that they are going on, you know, going through. I'm still right in the conversation, however, with him. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not taking that back, but I understand that there are the stressors of leadership and it's hard. And some people are better at it than others. And their communication piece is, if that piece is missing, it makes it hard. And my boss struggles with that. And thankfully, I have a little bit more knowledge to have that empathy piece towards him. But I think the hardest thing for me as a leader is to step back and listen and listen. Yeah. <laughs> because I very much was a person that was reactive. And as a leader, and to be a good leader, you do have to listen. And as in my DISC style, it's very hard for me to do that. What's your disc style? I'm a DI. Okay. <laughs> we are not the best listeners. And it, it is, it's good that I know that. And I work on it every day. You know, I work on it in my personal space. And I work on it as an entrepreneur and a leader. And, um, you know, you have, to, you have to listen to get to where you can communicate in an effective manner. And... Sometimes what comes out of my mouth, my employee may not be happy about, but I hope that I've given them enough tools to have the courage to visit with me about it. Yeah. And so are you, are you doing the disc profile for your employees? And when does that happen? It happens after they're hired. So we go through the hiring process and then, um, do you want me to hold it? Um, it go, we go through the hiring process and then that is part of their training. They do a three hour training before they even accept a job. So, and that allows them to kind of reflect on how they communicate, but it also allows them to realize what type of patients in the chair so that they can, um, you know, get the intent of uh, the intentions of getting them scheduled for their treatment because that's what they're there for you want to you know play nice with staff but in the end you're there for the patient recognize your disease and schedule so that gets done and if you are new they're not very trusting of you and you aren't able to to tell them what they need so that they can make that last step, then you have failed as a hygienist because they didn't recognize their disease. And sometimes it is the way that you communicate with the patient. And so I feel like giving them those tools allows them to be better at that because they're in so many different environments. So it allows them to be just more astute when it comes to that. Yeah, that's, um, and it's, it's life skills, it's personal skills, it and it affects everything. So you're giving them a gift of personal development which then, of course, directly impacts how they perform as an employee and as a hygienist and, um, and as a result and a reflection of you. But then also they're taking it back to their family. They're taking it back to um, their own life. And it has that, that trickle down effect into everything that they're doing. So that's, that's awesome. So then tell me now, we're going to transition into okay. your other stuff with your, I mean, you have oral cancer consulting on your badge. So tell us about that piece of what you do. So that is more of me being a cheerleader for my friend, Susan Cotton, you know, who is amazing. I love to watch her on stage. I am here as a cheerleader for her with that. Um, I do nothing more than support her and her workshops that she's creating um, as a, as a, you know, 
as a hygienist outside of the den. I speak on workplace wellness and communication. I have my workplace worksite wellness specialist certification. And so that allows me to be able to really grow that piece into my company and then, of course, my speaking. But um, it also allows me to help with some of the things that Susan may need in her company, a little bit of marketing and things like that. So I do help her with her workshops, but I help her along with, um, you know, just technology and marketing as well. So. That's awesome. So the certification workplace, well, that was a long, that was a long title. <laughs> yeah, it's a certified worksite wellness specialist. And so I've got that through the National Wellness Institute. And so it is certifies me to be able to, and um, you know, encapsulate all the workplace wellness issues that we're having. And you look into your environment, obviously health, demographics, things like that. Because when you look at wellness right now, a lot of people look at it as health and it's more than just health. It's your personal well-being, your space, the zip code that you live in could really affect, you know, the, the way that you get to work and things like that. So there are really essential things when as a boss and it makes it a little harder for us sometimes to go, where is this person coming from in need? And I, I know I need a few pounds to, to lose, to make me happy, but there are other things in wellness that we need to address as employers and as leaders to get them well at work. It's not just heart health and, you know, things like that. So what's the number one thing that you're kind of seeing consistently that people need in the workplace? You know, as far as that piece goes, I don't think anyone needs anything in particular. I do feel that they need to I guess I should take that back. What they need is the courage to ask. The communication piece for any relationship is key. You, If you don't have good communication skills, you may ask for something in an inappropriate manner and may not be received very well. Or if you have fear of asking for something, then you just stew on it and you don't get it. And I think that really is a lot of the root cause of frustration because people aren't taking the initiative to ask or people aren't expressing it in a manner that can get a proper response and good dialogue back and forth. Yeah, it's true because if you, if you don't try to seek the understanding to, to grow, to understand what's causing the conflict, to try to improve whatever that is, the reason why you're communicating, whatever that is and connecting to the overall like, premise of what it is you're trying to do, then what are we even doing? Right. And also, you know, understanding yourself, like, why is it? And, you know, if you're looking at a situation at work, are you, are you more frustrated with the situation? And that's something that you personally have to deal with because it gets on your nerves. Or is it really something that there is a solution and you need to either come to the table with it and discuss it? Or maybe you already know the answer and just have the courage to have to deal with it. So. Yeah. Or, or do something else about, it, cause you're always at choice. Right, right. Right. But if, but if you've handled your piece of it, you've leaned into that piece of your responsibility, then there's other choices too, to make beyond that. And I think it's just like a really good way to empower yourself. I think that that word empowerment's used quite a bit. And I, and I feel like there is meaning behind it in the sense that, you don't ever want to give someone the choice to make the decision for you. Taking it, whether it's a good or bad decision, to put yourself in the, as the decider is the empowering piece. And that is part of the communication. Agreed. That's, that was powerful. Yeah, that, that, that's so powerful. Yeah, it's um, so you do this coaching, you speak. And then, so tell me what it is that you speak about as well. So what I speak on is pretty much what we visited about today. So I am very much focused on the wellness of a person at work. So workplace wellness is really my jam. I, you cannot expect an employee or a leader or your boss to come to work and be in a good space if, if things are off kilter there. And it, you have to figure out why. And maybe it's a singular person 
or maybe it is because you're not clear, which Brene Brown really emphasized that and clarity and getting systems in place and things like that. It really does help you grow your practice and understanding that everyone wants the same thing. Your boss wants a good life, doesn't want a toxic environment. He just wants to come to work and do their job. They don't want to do that. We just want to come to work as employees and do our job. We want to have a good life. We want to go home, enjoy our families or have vacation. And we want to be able to do all those things. We want the same thing. We want the same thing. So how do we get that? We have to communicate those needs, go for a common goal. And if you are not in a, if you're not in a space that doesn't excite you to be there, than trying to find what excites you because sometimes it's not work and it work is supposed to enhance your life. It's not supposed to be your life. And sometimes work is just work and that's okay. But if it's something that's missing in your personal life so that you can be happy at work, then you have to find that you have to find it. And then there's the joy. Yeah. So what are like, two or three things that a person can do to improve their workplace wellness? Um, I think right now everyone is struggling with burnout and overwork and maybe feeling underappreciated. And when you look at your setting, the first thing I think as far as for me, I've, I just gone, I've been through this as a hygienist and I have to really evaluate my workspace and go, is it, my feelings that are inhibiting me from having a bad day? Is it my judgment? Is it my irritation? Is it my, do I need to get over that? Or do I need to discuss that? Is it something that I just need to just go, it's like that, it's not that big a deal, or do I need to visit? The second thing is, is you want to go, okay, I've visited and respond to what they've said, which is your boss. And do you like it? And then you accept whether or not you're going to stay or go or maybe introduce another conversation. So it really is assessing your environment, chatting with your boss, and then taking action and going, how does that make me feel? What do I do now? Because the choice is yours. That's how you stay in control. Yeah. You're always at choice. <laughs> Absolutely. Because yeah. so, you can choose to do nothing. Yeah. You can, you know, choose to leave or you uh-huh. can choose to have that conversation that can be difficult. But, you know, if you don't have it, then the other person can never grow from that either. That's right. So you've got to ask and, and, and ass- you have to assess, get to chatting if that's what needs to be done. And then you have to take action and whatever action that would be on your end. Brilliant. Well, so many, I know so many people are benefiting from learning from you with that. And then, I mean, you're just touching a lot of lives with, with the oh, work man. that you're doing. I mean, it's, it's true though. I mean, you're thinking about it. You, you help empower people who work with you and uh, you've created that opportunity for them to work in an environment where they feel supported with your company and temping. And you're doing this nationally you're you're speaking nationally about workplace wellness you've gone the extra step so you guys this is leadership this is about her you know taking that responsibility to say something has to give and that's what being an entrepreneur is all about is trying to solve problems right yeah yeah so how do you find your support because you said that being an entrepreneur the one of the hardest parts is being alone so how do you get you the support that you need well i definitely have been blessed that i live in colorado and we have a ton of smart hygienists in our state. Like it's ridiculous. <laughs> it is ridiculous. The, the, the faces that are on most speaker, um, uh, events are, they live in Colorado. And so I get the blessing of sharing a really good small circle with like-minded professionals. And when there is something that I do need to lean into, I, I do have a support system and everyone needs that as a leader or, you know, you know, at, you know, just in general, everyone does need to lean on that. But in my field, being around those like-minded people just really do help help uh, keep you in check. And, um, you know, you judge yourself all the time. The judge is always there. The imposter syndrome, wondering if you're doing the right thing. And, um, you know, it, um, it, 
you do have to have that support system. So Susan Cotton and Lanny McBeth are definitely a really wonderful support system for me. Yeah. That's awesome because I know that a lot of people feel that way or they it's, it feels very lonely sometimes as an entrepreneur because you don't have those people to say, you know, at work to collaborate with, especially when you're the owner because you have, it's a whole different set of issues and challenges, but it's good to know that you have people you can reach out to that, that do support you and do empower you. So um, I just so appreciate you being available to do this today and just meeting you in person too. I, yeah, I know. And I, all the wonderful things that you're doing. So how do people get in touch with you? How do people work with you, get in touch with you, ask questions about workplace wellness? How do they do that? So um, for workplace wellness, you can email me, Janice, it's J-A-N-I-E-C-E at thedensmiles.com. So that is my email and you can you know, email me with anything. If you're interested in tumping in the state of Colorado, that's the den And, um, you can find all your, all information on, you know, how you can do that with me. And I am your coach and I am your boss. So when you email me, like it is me, it's not like another person or, you know, it, it's, it's me. So that's good to know. You don't have a bot, <laughs> no, no bot. It's me. <laughs> sir. So um, to our listeners, thank you so much for tuning in today on today's episode of the dental handoff. Thank you again. Thank you. And um, if you guys wouldn't mind doing me a favor, you know what I'm going to ask. Give us a five-star rating on Apple and um, like and share our podcast. And thank you for all that you do to improve our profession and the health of our patients that we serve. Be well. Be well.